Welcome to this week's Race and News Show, where we've got loads of action coming from the UCI Mountain Bike World Series in Leo Gang this week. I was enjoying myself there and over at the Global Bike Festival in Salbach, so loads to talk about. Plus, of course, if you're into the racing, we've got all the highlights over on GMN Racing, plus those elite finals can be re-watched over on GCN+. <laughs> Let's start with the Enduro, and it was the first time at Leo Gang for the Enduro World Cup, and at the same time as the Cross Country and Downhill World Cups, plus e-bike Enduro as well. The stages were a mix of a bit of bike park, then some bigger, chunkier terrain in the Sal back into Glen Valley and back over to Leo Gang. It was a big day out with six stages. Trek Factory Racing's Harriet Harnden was back on the Enduro bike after getting a top 10 in a first ever World Cup downhill just last weekend. Gloria Scarzi of the Canyon Collective Dayanese was second in finale outdoor region last time as she chased down Isabeau Cordure all day but couldn't quite get there. Isabeau taking the win. Morgan Sharp of the Pivot Factory Racing team taking stage wins for third place. Uh, it's been pretty tough to manage, but I knew I had to push really hard on stage two because it was the uh, one that suited me the most and the one I wanted to. Yeah, if I had a chance, it was on this one. So I'm super happy I could put a good time on this one and then manage my day trying not to make too many mistakes and crash in the bike park. Jack Moyer was not there this weekend, he was out with illness. And also, our best wishes go to Iago Gray, who suffered a brain aneurysm at the previous race in Italy. Get well soon, Iago. Jesse Melamed had a tough weekend, actually crashing out on the natural stage two, actually on quite a tight corner. Then losing his chain on the penultimate stage, and he meant he could only finish in 10th place. Alex Rudeau of Commercial Enduro Project was winning stage five and being consistent enough to finish in third place. Whilst Yeti Fox's Richie Rude got going good all day and was just two seconds off Reese Werner on the Forbidden Synthesis team before the last stage. Reese Werner takes his first stage wins and beats them all again on the final stage to take his first ever Enduro World Cup win. Cordieria and Rude leaving Leo Gang with the overall lead. Let's hear it from Reese Werner. Honestly, a pretty sick day, start to finish. Like, started good, kind of won the first stage, and besides stage five, I think I was either first or second. I don't know about the last stage, but yeah, just like solid, consistent day, and yeah, it feels pretty unreal to actually put it together. Into the cross country, XCC short track, and Pauline Ferran Provo of Ineos Grenadiers was back to her winning ways on the tough short track here in Leo Gang with Puck Peters and Evie Richards following up. Uh, that was actually Pauline Frampro's first World Cup win of the year. Jordan Saru from Team BMC managed to beat the strong short track rider Luca Schwartzbauer with Marcus Blums in third. On to the cross country Olympic, Puck Peters of Alpsin de Koenig rode away from the front, showing off some of her cyclocross cornering skills, hanging her foot off and then attacking on the climbs. This Leo Gang track really seemed to suit the climbers and Puck really turned up the pain on the others, getting herself a 40 second lead. Second place finisher was Mona Mittenweiler of Cannondale Factory Racing. The young Austrian rider was 40 seconds back and then another 18 back to Laura Steger of Specialized Factory Racing. My tactic was to start quite fast so that maybe the, the people who start less fast uh, had a disadvantage on the climbs and I had a little gap maybe in the beginning. But then uh, the gap kept growing and growing and halfway through I was uh, totally dead but then uh, yeah, I had to keep pushing and luckily uh, it worked out. The women's XC overall title now looks like this. Puck Peters in first, Pauline Ferrampero in second and Loana Lecomte in third. Over to the men's race, well, Nino Schurter didn't have his best race this weekend. He was down in 21st, which was obviously not quite up to his normal standard. No, but you have to forgive him. I bet he had quite a big week of celebrations after last weekend, and I heard his cap still smelled of champagne. Lars Foster of Thomas Maxon won his second World Cup ever, his first back in 2019, so brilliant ride from him. Matthias Flucking actually punctured whilst in the league group, I mean, looked really good. He would finish 44 seconds back, probably wondering what could have been. Lucas Schwartzbauer in second and Andre Sink in third place. Yeah, the pretty good start. Uh, I, I don't know the position, but I think around uh, 10th. And uh, I just felt good. 
but I, I told myself, wait, wait, it's, uh, it's hot today, it's a long race, just uh, take, your, take your time and then I, I was riding place further, place further and I was thinking, yeah, maybe today I'm doing top five. And then in the third last, uh, yeah, I think when Mot Mot Matthias Flukiger had the flat tire, I overtook him. And uh, then I was thinking, okay, you are going for the win today. And then uh, last lap, I just, uh, I just, I knew from the second last lap, uh, I'm the strongest uphill, so I make the tempo ch just at the beginning and uh, push through from the oh, goosebumps. Last 500 meters to the finish, uh, I'm so happy. Now the men's overall XCO looks like this. Jordan Saru in first place, Nino Schurter second, and Luca Schwarzbauer in third. Over to the downhill racing where there were some injuries from last weekend. So Armory Pirion actually uh, has broken his neck. So uh, get well soon, Armory. And also Aaron Gwynn, as we saw, we had a big crash last weekend. Broken arm on the mend, hopefully. Now into the women's race, Phoebe Gale was fifth. A great ride for her on a first elite podium after coming up from junior this year. Monica Rashnik in fourth place. And Nina Hoffman putting in, uh, putting into the crash net in, in her final cost her a decent result. Rachel Atten may be slightly further down the list in qualities and semis than we were expecting, but a really solid run in finals. The splits did yo-yo a little bit, so it looked like she maybe left some time on the hill, maybe four seconds, without some of those mistakes, I think. Camille Balanche, again, in second place. I'm sure she's hoping for more, but a really good start for her season, nonetheless. And there was no beating Valentina Hull this weekend. Backing up her quali and semi performances with a win, a big win, in front of all her home crowd. She literally lives on the other side of the mountain, so big pressure, you've got to think, and she did it. Oh my god, just like Leo Gang is such a hard race for me, like last year was a disaster, I've never been so down and doubted myself, and the years before, first injury, then crash in the last corner, and every time I'm so close and it didn't work, and after that had I was like lost, I didn't know what to do, and it all just clicked this week, like all my friends are here, everyone I love is here and I'm so stoked they're all with me. Now the downhill overall, uh, Camille Balanche is leading that with Rachel Afton in second place, Valentina Hall in third. Will we see Rachel Afton in more races? Uh, who knows. On to men's race, it was a bit of a nail biter. Jackson Goldston had a brilliant run, he was winning but lost some time on that last turn. How much? Let's try and find out. Now it looks like it was about a second, but also really importantly, he lost rolling speed, so he carry that down the next straight as well. He was less than a second off the win, so it must have cost him that win. But that's how it goes, he could have made that mistake off camera at the top of the hill and had the same effect. But to pass up a win on the last turn must still sting. It would have been really good to see him win. The juniors going back to back after Jordan Williams' win last week, but still an amazing ride for his first elite podium in just his second race. What do you think we're gonna see from him over in Val de Sol? I think he's gonna ride good there. Also an amazing ride from the new proof rider, Ronan Dunn. He's a very good character. And again, showing his speed for his first ever top 10 with eighth place. Danny Hart was also on a really good run and then front punctured his tire actually coming off the rim and then he got his helmet camera stuck into the catch net. So disappointing for Danny. Finn Isles, great ride as well, but maybe a mistake cost him. Uh, Lucas Shaw in fifth place, great to see him back on the podium. Lope Bruni, brilliant ride, second place, but it was Andreas Kolb, his first World Cup win after showing the speed last year with podium finishes and then qualifying first last week at Lensheide. So double Austrian wins in downhill for Valentina Hall and Andreas Kolb. It's hard to talk to be honest. Um, it's so emotional for me. It's my ninth season in Elite. It took me ages to get here and I will never forget this day. It's unreal. The overalls for the men is now Lope Bruni in the lead with Finn Ars in second and third goes to Loris Virgios, maybe it's kind of quietly chipping away and in a super strong position. All right, that's it from this week's racing news show. Like I said earlier, there's loads of racing highlights to watch over on GMN Racing for free. Also, of course, if you've got the GCN Plus sub, then there's all the highlights from all the racing. Plus, of course, loads of road racing there if you're into that as well. But loads of brilliant mountain bike racing. And we'll be back in a couple of weeks for Val de Sol.